Hi, my name is Sagar from DataCoil and on this video, we'll be talking about how to create and connect Postgres database on Amazon RDS with PG Admin. Amazon Relational Database System, RDS, makes it quite easy to set up, operate and scale relational database in cloud. Database can be difficult to manage and operate with high availability as we scale our application and as there are things that we have to deal with like hardware provisioning, DB setup, backups, upgrade, and patch-ups. Amazon RDS automates all of this task and gives our application fast performance, security, and scalability that they need. We can choose among all the popular relational database engine, which are both commercial and open source. Amazon just add a management layer on top of them. It also comes with lots of benefits like use, ease of use and maintainability, and that is the reason a lot of brands use Amazon RDS. I'm now signed into my management console and we can search relational database system or RDS from here. We're going to click manage relational database service or RDS and we can create the database from clicking on this button. While this is loading, relational database is essentially a database that is based on table and it stores data in a structured format using rows and columns. We can easy create on but on this tutorial we'll use standard create options and we'll briefly grow through all configuration option. We'll be selecting Postgres. The default version should work fine. We'll be selecting free trial for this tutorial but we can select other options like production or dev test based on our requirement. Then we have to specify name of name for database instance, which should be unique across all instances in your account. I'll choose data coil DB here. Then we have to specify username and password for logging into our database. I'll leave the name to Postgres and I'll add the password in both fields. For database instance, we can choose among the given instances. Right now we're using DB2 Micro, which contains which comes with one CPU and one gigs of RAM. Should be fine for this tutorial, but we can choose different classes based on power and memory requirement. We we'll leave storage to SSD and allocated storage to default of 20 GB. We'll enable auto scaling, which is enabled in default, which means AWS will automatically increase the storage once we reach 20 GB in the database. We can also specify maximum storage threshold. 1000 here means AWS can increase database size up to 1000 GB. Multi AG deployment. It gives us option to create a standby instance in different availability zone than the original database instance. This can help us to increase availability in case of in case of planned or unplanned outages. We we'll leave it to as it is. We we'll leave the virtual network environment and subnet group to default and set public access to yes. This will allow devices outside of virtual private cloud to connect to the database. Then we create a new security group and we'll change the name of the new security group to data coil BPC. We can select among the availability zones. This can increase latency, especially in the case of massive data workloads. But for the case of this tutorial, we we'll leave it to default value. Database port is by default set to 5432. We'll leave it as it is. Under authentication, we'll need to leave default password based on authentication, which will allow us to log in using password and username. Also, there are other ways to authenticate based on IAM or Kerberos. 
in additional configuration we can have to specify initial database name we'll choose data coil here and we'll leave parameter group and option group to default for backup we'll have option to enable automatic backup and select retention period that is the number of days relational database system should retain automatic backup for this instance we can all also select backup window and specify start time and duration we'll all leave all of this to default value similarly we also have option to replicate backup onto another region which can be used for recovery in case of disaster or failure we can also choose if we want to enable or disable performance or monitoring and have option to export logs which we leave to the default value also we have option to enable or disable performance or monitoring we'll disable both of them and we'll also have option to export log which will disable all of this so we have option to choose so we can choose between enabling or disabling performance or monitoring so we will disable the performance for the sake of this tutorial and also we have option to choose which logs do we want to be recorded and we we'll leave this value disabled lastly we can choose to enable automatic or minor version upgrade and enable or disable deletion protection we'll leave this value to default as well and now when you click create create database will be shortly redirect to database instance space and amazon rds will take few minutes to create the database instance we can see when cre the creating has been completed from the status tab here which is currently set to creating we'll give this a few minutes to complete while you are waiting for this we can move into pg admin pg admin is one of the most popular database management tool on postgres it simplifies the creation, maintenance, and use of database objects and provides a phenomenal GUI interface. We can download pgadmin from pgadmin.org slash download. It has cross-platform support for all major OSs and Docker. We'll choose Ubuntu from the list. Since I have got this already installed, I won't be installing again, but you can follow these commands to install pgadmin to your system. All of the links would be available in the description if you go back to the RDS page we can see the database instance has been created and the status of this instance has been changed to available when you click the database instance we'll need the endpoint and the combination of username and password for connecting to the database from PG admin after PGN had been installed we can start pc admin by going through a launcher which will take a few seconds to start it will probably ask to set up a master password for the first time which you can do with ease the second time when you run pc admin it will ask to re-enter the same password like you can see in, as you can see in the screen so i'm going to re-enter the password We can create a new server from here by right clicking the server under browser and we have to specify the name of server and right now I'll use data coil AWS as server name and for connection we'll need host name or address which we can get from our database instance in point so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here for connection we have to specify username and password and that is the same password and username that we used while creating the server the username was Postgres which is a default username and I'm going to specify the password and we can click on save So we can connect to the database we just created from here if we click here we can get the list of databases running on that server 
we can select the Postgres one or we can specify new database. I'm going to add a new table for the sake of the tutorial and I'm going to go on query tool and I'm going to type create table test table logs text and I'm going to run it so we have created a new table which we can view from here the columns it has is logs so in this way we can create a new database using AWS RDS and connect it with PG admin so that's all thank you for watching